Hey everyone, this is Cab from Kinetic Entertainment Media, and I want to bring to you today just an instructional around high resolution texture packs, what you need to get them going. And I have done something, hopefully, that makes it super easy for you guys because I have downloaded a compendium of the available texture packs. This is the location that texture packs are available from. So I've taken the step of getting them together, correctly naming the folder structures to be compatible with how the emulator wants them to be uh, and, and archive them together into one download. So in the comments, you're gonna find this link, which should be your first step, uh, is just to go ahead and download this link. Now, before we get further into it, what is a, what is a high resolution texture pack? Well, uh, fan artists have taken, you know, games that, that they really enjoyed on the 64 and they have modified them. So let's do, uh, let's go ahead and launch Super Mario 64. They've modified them to have different textures than what was originally in the game. So what happens is it provides a high res text texture folder. Uh, when the game launches, it actually finds that folder, it loads those textures into memory. And when you play the game, you're able to visually see them. It's not pixel perfect for what you're originally doing. Oh, we loaded Super Smash Brothers. It's fine. This one has a, a texture pack regardless. Uh, what's interesting about the Super Smash Brothers, uh, the Super Smash Brothers texture pack is a lot of people complain or have had problems, especially on the three where the face doesn't get drawn. But the texture pack, obviously, it's loading textures with faces and higher definition on them. Uh, so it will kind of fix that no face problem. Uh, and and also and you're also getting the high resolution texture packs. You'll see in the menu, even in the character select screen, it's using much better models for the character select screen. So that's pretty interesting. We'll go ahead and do that. So what what the texture pack? I mean, it's not pixel perfect. It's not your nostalgic childhood you know trip. But I find that it adds a new. I mean, for for Super Smash Remix or for Super, Super Smash Brothers. Uh, it improves that face, that visual loading of the face that uh, that happened before. And it provides kind of like a, a fresh and new, different way to play the game, right? So Super Mario 64, you've beaten that game so many times. Uh, I really like playing through it with a different texture pack. There's like three or four available for Super Mario Brothers. And it just makes it very enjoyable to kind of play through again. Uh, looking at... I enjoy kind of whatever the artist is thinking and what, what he's done and what he's skinned and, and et cetera. So uh, if you've decided that it's something you want to try out, let's get into the instructions on, on how to actually get it uh, working. So one pre-setup step on the actual Raspberry Pi, if, you've, if this is like a new image and you're, you're, you're just kind of barely setting it up, <clears throat> you need to remotely connect uh, for, for this. So if you haven't set up SSH or enabled SSH off of a fresh image, you need to take that step. So all you have to do is plug a keyboard into your Pi and hit F4, and then type in the command sudo raspi dash config. Once you've done that, you need to go to option five, which is interfacing options. I go to option P2, SSH, and then select yes for would you like SSH server to be enabled. Press OK, finish. That'll exit you from that screen. You can type in emulation station and hit enter, and it'll launch you back into emulation station. That's all the pre-setup that we need to do on the Raspberry Pi side. Now on the computer side, go ahead and download the high-res texture link that I will have in the comments. Extract that archive wherever you know, into a known good location on your uh, on your your Windows desktop. Then we're gonna launch the we're gonna launch the uh, WinSCP program. We're gonna change file protocol to SCP, uh, and we're gonna type in our, our Raspberry Pi's uh, IP. If you don't know what your Raspberry IP's uh, IP is, you can find that in the RetroPie options menu. You just need to make sure that you have either an Ethernet cord plugged into it or have connected it to the Wi-Fi. Once you've done that, just go ahead and hit the show IP button and it will 
give you just right here in this menu show IP. So make sure you've recorded that, you know what that IP is. Come back to your window, go ahead and fill that IP in. And then as username and password, if you're using an official image, it should be Pi Raspberry uh, Raspberry. And the unofficial image for Raspi for the unofficial dev build, I think it's on 458 at the time of this video, is available and for download. Um, I'll also leave a link in the comments uh, for, for, for Raspi 4 builds. And then just go ahead and click uh, login. This side, we're going to navigate to where we unzipped, where we downloaded and unzipped our high res texture.rar pack. You should see a file structure very similar to this. Uh, your Diddy Kong Racing may be lowercase because when I zipped it up, I hadn't uppercased it yet. Just change it to uh, this, this uh, specific casing. And you only need to upload, you wouldn't actually upload F0 Climax. So I'll show you the steps that we're gonna go through for F0 Climax. That folder you wouldn't have to, uh, that wouldn't, you wouldn't have to upload. This is, uh, on these two specific files, I have two different types of a Mario 64 texture pack, and you can just rename and change between these two to load the other one, right? So there's no way to dynamically configure switching between the two. You just have to rename the folder names and delete and re-upload based on which one you want to load. So on this side, in a, when, once you've connected on WinSCP, the left side is your local file storage, and the right side is the remote storage. You're already going to be in the slash home slash pi directory. So in order to put these files in the location that they're supposed to be, we need to put them into a hidden folder, uh, which is what, what WinSCP actually makes that really easy. So we can confirm on the wiki page that dot .local is the folder that we need to be in, right? Dot .local slash share slash movement 64 plus. In order to get to dot .local, all we need to do is come into this directory. We're gonna take this, this this little configurable menu or this option up here, it's gonna say open terminal. So it's either shift control T or just click it. Sorry, not that. You can launch putty from that window. And then once you've done that, you're gonna type in cd space dot local and then hit enter or execute, right? And then just close. This will put you into the dot local folder. And once you've done that, double click share. Now if movement 64 plus is not here and it might not be, uh, just create the directory by right-clicking new file, new directory, and you just name that folder movement 64 plus. It should be there. So if it's there, just double click it. If not, just create the directory and then go ahead and same thing for high res texture. If it's there, create it. If it is not, just go ahead and double click it. Uh, it <laughs> sorry. If it is there, create, uh, create it. If it, if it uh, isn't there, create a directory and then double click into it. Now go ahead and select everything that came out of that archive with the exception of F0 Climax uh, and F0 X Patch. Those, the only, these two, those two you would not actually need to upload. <coughs> and then upload over on this side. Make sure you rename that Diddy Kong Racing to Diddy, uh, to this capital case spelling because yours are probably lowercase. Now, um, now that you've done that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set up F0 X. Uh, unfortunately you have to patch ROM, which I couldn't include. So you need to have an existing F0X ROM in order to do this. But sans that, all you need to do is come into the F0X Climax folder. It's the exact same for both of these versions. Uh, I prefer the F0X Climax. So when you double click into there, you're gonna see everything here except for this file. So that's your F0, uh, that, that's your F0, actually, let me just redo this. This would be your F0 ROM. So you're not going to have that, but just go ahead and click, uh, copy it and paste into this folder uh, your existing version of F0X. Once you've done that, go into the Lunar IPS Patcher folder, double click this, run it, click Apply IPS Patch, uh, just go back one file directory select F0X Climax US or J Japanese if you want to patch it in Japanese, but I mean, you probably speak in English if you're watching this video. So hit open and then same thing. But what we need to do is we need to drop this to all files because it can't see the 64 extension, the Z64 extension, and then just cl click your original source ROM and hit okay. And then it's going to give you a message. The file was successfully patched. 
Now, once you've done that, you can upload. Same thing for this uh, F0X patch, the same basic instructions, um, but I'm just gonna walk you through the, the F0 Climax one. Now, once you've done that, just go ahead and you can actually rename this file to F0 Climax. On this side, you can just back out to your ROM directory, RetroPy, ROMs, N64, and upload that specific file in order to in order to put it inside of your ROMs directory. And then you would restart emulation station on your RetroPy side, and you would be able to see that ROM and launch it. That's all the, there is to the, the setup for getting everything into place on your computer side. Now go ahead and switch over to your RetroPy. Browse over to your Nintendo 64 tab and pick one of the compatible ROMs that has one of the compatible ROMs that you have a matching texture pack folder for and launch the game. I really recommend hopping into the run command option very quickly. <coughs> you're going to want to uh, do a few things. You're going to want to make sure that you're using Mupin 64 Plus, either Glide or Rice. Glide or Rice are the only two plugins that support high resolution texture packs. So, and I say that knowing full well that there's options in Libretro for enabling high resolution texture packs. However, I haven't gotten to that to work. If you have, please leave some comments in the video. At this point, what I have successfully gotten to work is Glide and Rice, as far as plugins that will load that will successfully load a texture pack. Um, if I get the other ones working, I will put an update to this video. But for now, just make sure that you're using either Glide or Rice, uh, you know, as the the plugin. So certain games run better with certain plugins, like for example. Glide is really good for most of these, but Legend of Zelda uh, runs just much better with a Rice plugin. So for something like Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask, it's real important to come into the run command specifically for these two ROMs and make sure that the emulator for ROM for both Ocarina of Time and Legend of Zelda is Glaze to Rice. The other thing that you need to make sure is that you're using a video mode that's, that's 1024 by 768 or better. Um, the reason for this is that the texture packs won't load fully on anything smaller than that. And the higher the resolution, the better the texture pack is going to look. Probably like 16 by 12 and 1920 by 1080 are the best looking. Um, but it will will start to, it, it'll work at as low as 1024 by 768. The higher you put the resolution, the, the, the better visual effect you will get. It's just, it's just something about how the textures rend, etc. So, you can kind of balance that based off of what resolution you like playing the games at, as well as what works for your performance, right? Because one of the ways we help, uh, like on a Raspberry Pi 3, one of the ways we manage performance on some of the more difficult to run N64 games is by lowering the resolution in order to play them. Uh, I am lucky enough to have a Raspberry Pi 4. I've overclocked it. I really like the performance. I think it handles... For all of the texture pack games, it handles uh, 720p and 1080p, so I'm not really worried about it. But if you don't have a uh, Pi 4, you may have to kind of tune some of these settings uh, around to what works for you. Let me just go ahead and launch Super Mario 64 because I think that one looks really cool. And you can always keep a copy. And one of the things you can do is you can keep a copy of like, you can just copy a Super Mario 64 ROM and then like make a, a, a high res, like rename the file high res. And then you could launch Super Mario 64 with Glide on one and you could launch it with uh, Glez on the other so that you have a way to launch one with the texture pack and one without the texture pack. And you can just kind of like, that's that's why you'll see some of my ROMs are, are named high res and non high res. So you have the option to easily boot, boot back and forth between the two. <clears throat> so this is, I believe this is the Molly Mutt one. <clears throat> now resolution pack, texture packs do, do have a perform, like they, for example, when you ran these on threes, uh, the 
performance was there was an impact on performance. There was a small impact on performance. It was still playable, but it does it does kick up a little bit. Like it, it, it it's more demanding on hardware resources than playing the game without the texture pack. Uh, something to do with you know it's it's using a little more compute power. It's using a little more storage. So keep that in mind if you're trying to do this on a three. Uh, the Pi Four doesn't struggle with any of the ones that I've tested or, or or worked with yet so i wouldn't worry about it on a pi 4 but on a 3 you may have to tweak your tune just a little bit and so here's just a good example of of 60 mario 64 looking totally new totally fresh and uh hope that this has been super helpful for you guys because uh it's something that i enjoy and i really like so if you like the video, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, uh, and check out the SBC Gaming Discord chat to talk RetroPie, and you can find me on there. Thanks, guys.